Hey everybody, welcome. We're gonna have a little chat today. I'm gonna try to keep it somewhat short, but I'm glad to be able to visit with you. So um, I am gonna open my chat window because I think there's a way to see comments and that way I know that you're here. So um, you guys, the way this works is it uh, there's a system that is streaming this live to my Facebook page and to the Quilt Show pay Facebook page, but it also goes to YouTube. So you can watch it in various places, but that also means that the comments come from various places. Hello, Miss Margot. And those comments then pop into this system. So I don't always see your comments because there's so, I mean, there's sometimes they're going relatively fast. Um, from Togo. Wow, that's uh, very, very wonderful. Thank you so much. And Christy, it's good to see you from Tallahassee, Florida. Um, i I uh, excited to see you guys coming in from everywhere. Um, once we kind of get started here, I've got a fun little surprise to show you guys. And then I want to uh, wanna talk about 9-11. The reason that I wanted to speak today is because we are having, of course, the remembrances of 20 years ago. Yesterday on Facebook, I asked people to post images of their works, their quilts, or things that perhaps they created as a way to commemorate or to work through their own uh, challenges. And so I wanted to kind of show some of those that came in from yesterday, which is why I'm doing this today, because yesterday was a little bit of gathering. Robert, it's great to see you from Wisconsin. Thank you so much. Um, and Karen and Terry. It's great to have you all here today as well. Thank you so much. This is cool. I have a new feature that lets me see if you're on Facebook or if you're on YouTube. So uh, so a tiny little icon is letting me see that. And I'm really happy to see that. So, um, so all right. So I'm just going to get started with a fun thing first. This is just because many of you know I live on the mountain. I live at almost 9,000 feet elevation. And I try to garden a little bit, which is relatively new for me. It's just I want to have some landscaping. But in the process of landscaping, I have also, um, I've also tried to grow some vegetables. And a couple of years ago, I was very successful with squash and zucchini, which I realize are relatively easy to grow. This year, I've grown peppers. And I haven't got very many, but I've had peppers. And I also tried tomatoes, and I planted the tomatoes before the snow stopped. And people were telling me, don't you know you shouldn't do that? And then other people were telling me, Ricky, you'll never get a ripe tomato at 9,000 feet. Well, I can attest to the fact that I have myself collected four ripe cherry tomatoes. I can't show them to you because I ate them. But I can show you a little bit of my bounty. So I want to show you, sitting right here on the counter next to me. Those are my vegetables that are in the basket. And it's insane, but yes, another zucchini got way out of control. This guy, I, I, I think I'm going to make two or three loaves of zucchini bread out of this one. It got so big. That's the second one that got hidden. But let me show you my tomatoes. So this, I'm just so excited. Yeah, and I have lots of tomatoes outside on the vine right now, but they are, um, they're, they're green, and I may be eating a lot of green tomatoes. I do have Roma tomatoes, and I'm going to show you this one. I picked this one a little bit early because I also have chipmunks, little ground squirrels, striped ones, and, um, since this was my first Roma tomato to try to ripen, I picked it while it was still orange. I think it will continue to ripen in the window. So um, so at least if they get the other Roma tomatoes, I have one. And so that's that's my story. I also took this uh, this fun little picture for you so you can see the, the vegetables sitting there. And I've got squash that is just unlike anything. I suppose the squash and zucchini might have cross-pollinated because sometimes when I cut into the squash, I have green on the inside, which is more like a zucchini than a squash. So anyway, um, 
<laughs> Patsy, you are right. Those zucchinis do like to hide, and then suddenly they just sneak up on you, and there they are, uh, like the, the monster that they are. So, you guys... Um, so let's let's just kind of change the topic. I don't want this to be a downer day. I think that the important thing is that we, you know, we just take time to remember. And I think the the phrase never forget is one of those things that I hold dear and I don't want to forget either. So I think this is a good time to con to commemorate. I want to share with you what I posted on Facebook yesterday and maybe this will get uh the ball rolling. Um please do feel free to uh, add your comments. If, I, if I'm not able to see all of them, at least you're posting them and they can be read later. I would like to, if you've got an image or a story, please feel free to jot that down and write that in the comments. And again, even if I can't see it here, we can all appreciate your stories. So this particular quilt, uh, this is the quilt that became my 9-11 quilt. It's called New World Symphony. And it is simply a trip around the world quilt. But let me explain to you, and I'm just going to share with you my writing, because that's the best way for me to really tell this story. Um, the events of September the 11th, 2001 are unforgettable to all of us. As a quilter, I felt compelled to create a quilt that expressed my personal feelings about the terrorist attacks. The images and stories that infiltrated my mind are etched on my heart forever. For several months, I searched for an idea, but I kept drawing a blank. In early 2002, I began working on a quilt with my dad. It's called Dad's Lone Star. And while my dad was working on the diamonds to create that lone star, I decided to just work on squares and I decided to make a simple trip around the world quilt using my colorful hand-dyed fabrics. As my quilt grew, it dawned on me that this quilt, this was it. This is my 9-11 quilt. I hadn't planned it, but the message became undeniably clear. And this is that message. Instead of creating images of loss, heartache, and disaster, my quilt became a symbol for hope. For you see, I realized that each band of color represented a different country a different custom, a different religious belief, a difference in social economical diversity, sexual orientation, or any other differences that comprise the ingredients of our world's humanity. The colors on this quilt blend. They sing, they dance, and they wrap each other with companionship. This quilt became a symbol of diversity, and the ultimate message is this, that if mankind with our differences, could get along like the colors in this quilt, there would not be a need to fly airplanes into buildings. It's a utopian concept, yes, I agree, but nonetheless, something that we should consider and a message that I hold dear. I named this quilt New World Symphony after the Dvorak's Ninth Symphony because that's my favorite symphony and it speaks to the idea of hope and renewal. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, that's my sentiment on this. I've received a message that maybe some of the links are not working for the live, but uh, try again. And uh, so there's, there's that. That's my sentiment. I don't know how you feel about it, but that's my quilt. It is a very simple quilt. It's not a complex quilt. It's just one of those things that I feel really, uh, really speak to me. And speaking of quilts, I thought I'd share with you this quilt. This is my dad's Lone Star quilt that my dad and I worked together. So while dad was working on the diamonds of this quilt, um, I was working on the, uh, the, uh, the trip around the world quilt. These quilts, this quilt was not a commemorative quilt for 9-11, and I didn't intend for my New World Symphony quilt to be that, but it, it simply was. So um, on 9-11, I was in Leicester, England, teaching a quilt class. I was on an actual six-week tour. I had done two weeks up in Scotland. I was doing two weeks kind of in the middle of England, and then I was doing an additional two weeks down in the south of England. 
And so this was kind of in the middle uh, after maybe four weeks of my trip. It was right at the end. And I was in a, we were in a scout hut. Um, I think girl guides, uh, there was a hut. And I was teaching one of my classes. And late in the afternoon, around three o'clock, four o'clock, Justin came in and somebody in the office had reported that um, the uh, the World Trade Centers had been hit. Well, one of them at the time. And then it wasn't long before we got the second message. And of course, being in this sort of a hut, and in 2001, we didn't have access to the TVs or our cell phones and that sort of thing to just get information. We just got it off the radio and as it was filtering in. So we finished that class and uh, went to my hostess's house and sat the rest of the evening in, in just numbness watching the events unfold. And I know that many of you, uh, you, you'll never forget where you were or what you were doing that day. Um, I can tell you that the people in England wrapped their hearts around us. They were as horrified as we were in the fact that we weren't home. Um, I think they really, really embraced us with just amazing love. And I will always be very appreciative for my friends in England and I had to continue my tour, so within the next day, I was off and heading down to Bath, England to do another set of classes. Um, I wanted to go home, but of course, the flights were grounded, so there wasn't going to be any going home. There wasn't anything I could do. It just felt odd to not be home, and um, I continued to do. Uh, after the final two weeks of uh, teaching, my regular flight was able to fly, but it was flown maybe a quarter full. There was nobody on that flight two weeks later. So that's where I was, and that was what I was doing. Uh, and of course, no easy texting or cell phone calls back then. It was just a, being in a different world and reading the newspapers in the UK, and that was my experience. I want to share with you uh, a couple of other things. Uh, these are from yesterday. This is from Deb Rhodes, and she said she made this from an online pattern. Um, I think it's a wonderful expression. Not everybody has the ability to necessarily create their, you know, their own designs. And so I think it's wonderful that these options can be out there for us to make our own memorial quilt. And I do, I love this. This was fun. I really appreciated seeing this quilt. And then Robin uh, said yesterday on September the 11th, I was a homeschool mom, I was meeting a group of young ladies for a writing class in another county. As we gathered and prayed at the post office for the events of the day, we discussed if we should go or not. One of the kids said, if this causes us to be afraid, then the terrorists win. If we stand strong, we win. I refused to live in fear of the unknown. My lesson was learned from a 12-year-old, and this was before Robin became an avid quilter. I think it's very true. Uh, I think that we still have to continue to live our lives not in fear, but uh, doing what we must do and not avoiding the things. You know, there's, there's going to always be evil and sacrifice in this world. Uh, evil that comes to us and sacrifice for those that are doing the right thing. But nonetheless, I don't think that we can live our lives in fear. This one is from Angela Monks, or Angelica Monks. I was, I was supposed to fly to New York that week from the United Kingdom. My cousin had booked tickets to go to the Twin Towers. That trip never happened. I did a workshop with you in Bath, UK, the Caveman Workshop, I couldn't finish the quilt until 10 years later. Every time I took it out to work on it, sadness befell me and I put it away. So this was a, a student that remembered being with me when I went down to Bath just a couple days later after the towers were hit uh, and the uh, Pentagon and the Flight 93. And I, um, I taught caveman, I taught primitive patchwork. This is the primitive patchwork quilt and um, and I really am happy to see that this quilt finally got finished. And uh, Angelica told me in my message that uh, she used images of cave paintings to hand quilt the border, and she calls this uh, cave canvas. But this is a quilt that she didn't necessarily make to commemorate, but the events of 9-11 will forever be, you know, embedded into the making and the creation of this quilt. 
Mary uh, Diner said as she was working through making this quilt, working through this quilt, making it helped bring her solace. And, uh, you know, I don't think quilts have to be, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't have to be show prize winning quality. This is a beautiful quilt with beautiful workmanship, but it's fairly straightforward. It's fairly simple, but it says all the things that need to be say that need to be said. And um, this one looks like it's been framed. So no doubt it still stays on the wall and um, never forget. It just, it's back to never forget. Sally Warren uh, Baum Baumeister says, Ricky, I don't know what I've done with the picture of the quilt that I was finishing that day and the next. A group of quilters online sent me blocks of love to put together. It was a quilt for a hubby of one of our members. He was dying and had been such an encourager to all of us in the group. We had plans of doing a family vacation the next day to Gatlinburg. We felt guilty and we were afraid to go, but decided, as was previously mentioned, we shouldn't let this awful thing that happened make us afraid. My daughter and I sat in the back seat of the car and put the finishing touches to the binding on the way to the mountains. I then was concerned if the post office would even take a package there, but they did without giving it a thought. Sadly, the precious gentleman that we sent it to died before the quilt got to him, but his wife told us how it helped her so much with her grief of his passing. I love your trip around the world quilt and the meaning behind it. I think it's just fabulous, you people. You understand when I say quilts are more than quilts. They are stories. They have memories woven into them. They have life intertwined in them. And even in this situation here, we're looking at a story of a quilt that was not necessarily made to commemorate the events of that day, but it was a special quilt for someone who is no longer with us. Lucy says, beautiful way to remember that tragic day. We, my husband David and my mom, since passed in 2012, and by the way, Lucy's from Australia. Uh, they were on the last leg home of a family trip. They had been to Ireland, Italy, and the USA in San Francisco, and they were going to meet family that they had never connected with before. They arrived in San Francisco the day before 9-11 after missing a connecting flight from London. Staying with my cousin, we woke to see the TV airing the towers being hit and going down. What a horrific time, but what a blessing as well as we had a week with family relaying childhood memories about our mums that we had never heard before. We have experienced several near misses in our lives over 20 years of overseas travel. We are truly fortunate and lucky to live in Australia, known as the lucky country. And Lucy, I did not know that Australia was known as the lucky country, but I'm not surprised. It's a beautiful place, and I love when, the times that I've been there. But yes, I mean, how amazing that your flight was a day before this disaster and how blessed that you were. I, I think it's uh, important to remember the lives that were lost that day, the, the fear and the horror that must have been going through people's minds as they saw what was about to be, befall them. Certainly uh, tragic for, for all those people. I did not know anyone personally who lost their lives that day, but um, I know many of you have. Many of you most certainly have. If you have a quilt or something, a piece of art that you created, I would love for you to put it in the comments if you're able to do that. I don't know that you can add images in uh, on YouTube, but you could put a link on YouTube. And also on Facebook, you can certainly put an image. Uh, Marilyn uh, Matfeld said, I belong to Treadle On. Uh, I guess that's a Treadle sewing machine group. After 9-11, we did a block exchange using the Friendship Star. Everyone signed their blocks with name and the machine they used, and united we stand. It took me a while to decide on the pattern. Many tears were shed sewing it together, but I love it. And you can see at the top, it says September the 11th, 2001, and the bottom says never forget. I think it's a beautiful setting. I think it's a beautiful quilt. It's fun to see what people put together, but also I'm sure that there were a lot of memories and a lot of things going through 
uh, Marilyn's mind as she worked on this quilt. Anne, who is a good friend in, uh, in, down in South Texas, she wrote uh, that her husband and she were in Williamsburg, Virginia, on the way to Colonial Williamsburg for the day. We heard about the first and second plane hitting the towers. Then, because we were sightseeing, we did not hear any more news until afternoon on the way home on a tour bus. That was when we realized that someone had been looking out for us because we had planned to take a special tour in Washington that day. The tour included the Pentagon, which my husband really wanted to see. But the campground in Maryland was very expensive, so we decided to move on and skip that tour. The sky was strangely silent with no planes except the military planes going over. And then the next day when we wanted to visit two nearby lighthouses, we found out that they were on a military base and civilians were no longer allowed to be on the base, even to see the lighthouses that were on the outer edge at the base. The strangest few days of my life and I will never forget the sacrifices made that day. I think that is true. You guys, um, I am at uh, facebook.com slash Ricky Timms. Uh, just spell my name correctly, R-I-C-K-Y-T-I-M-S. So if you're not on Facebook, uh, Katrina, you can go to facebook.com slash Ricky Timms and you'll find my public page and you can follow me there. I don't think I have that on the screen, but but I know you're hearing me, so... Uh, Facebook.com slash Ricky Timms, R-I-C-K-Y-T-I-M-S. I have to let people know my last name is a four-letter word. And then Susan. Susan says, I have a series of 9-11 quilts currently on exhibit along with journal excerpts written during the time I was in New York City volunteering as a licensed mental health counselor. I gave an artist talk yesterday, that was two days ago, about my quilts and experiences. It was wonderful to see so many people there who appreciated these art quilts. Um, Susan, I really wish that, that I had seen more of these. This is the one that you posted. But how exciting that there is a series of quilts and that it is on exhibit to commemor commemorate this. And I was so happy to hear that you were able to create it, that, that it was on display, and that you were able to share the experiences. So, um, so wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, that you've created these. I, if you have, if you hear this and you want to post more, please post more quilts. I would love to see the expressions and hear the stories behind it. I think everybody else would love that too. So I'm gonna. This is the last slide I have for you guys, um, and I hope that you are posting some more of your memories, writing some of your stories down. Um, but here's what Paula Nadelstern says. Now, Paula is a, a well-known, internationally well-known quilter. She makes the, the most amazing kaleidoscope quilts like on the planet, and they are beautiful. And this one uh, is uh, the one that represents uh, that experience, uh, September the 11th, 2002. So this is a year later experience. But this is what she wrote on Facebook yesterday. I chatted with Paula briefly and she allowed me to share this with you. The inevitable reminiscences about the role of art and artists after a crisis of unnerving proportions might lead to the conclusion that the creative process is futile. And I like that. Just think about that. Or perhaps creating beauty in a tumultuous world is an act of optimism an opportunity to craft a spirit while shaping one's spirituality. And I don't know about you, but being an artist, I go for the latter. That what we do with our art after something like this does show that beauty can come and that we have a way to express as artists and use our gifts, our gifts, our God-given talents to express something that might lead others to find hope and light and peace or if nothing else, to be thought-provoking and create dialogue that I would hope would bring more unity and peace into the world. So I love this quilt by Paula Nadelstern, and uh, I really appreciate being able to share these things with you today. Um, everyone, it's so great to be with you. I, I am looking forward to go and seeing your works, your quilts, your stories added to all of this. Uh, thank you for spending a little bit of time with me today here on the mountain. 
Um, no need to belabor the point. I just wanted to take time on this 20th anniversary year of 9-11 to express my heartfelt thanks for all of the first responders that you know came to us, all of the uh, medical professionals that tended to wounds, all of the mental health people that dealt with our minds to help us stay on track. And also, we just want to, for those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, our hearts and prayers go to the families. Thank you so much for joining me today on this little chat. And I'm going to say goodbye. And God bless all of you. Let's look forward to seeing each other again really soon. Take care. Thank you.